It's bigger than my head. <laughs> it's significantly bigger than your head. It's like poor Kevin heads. That's a lot of mass, by the way. What's up, Light Bright Nation? And welcome to day five? Are we on day five? Day five. Day five. Ah, ah, ah. ah. Basically, the stepchild's complete and utter total makeover. So we've got the Hemi in, the Hemi is started, the Jeep is running. However, most of you guys noticed when we showed you our new KMC wheels and our new 40-inch Milestar Patagonia tires that our wheels had eight lugs instead of five. So of course, we're upgrading the axles because 500 foot-pounds of torque, 500 horsepower, plus Kevin's super heavy foot, which I'm sure is gonna be fantastic, definitely involves stronger stuff underneath the Jeep. So Dynatrack, you guys already know we are running the Dynatrack Pro Rock 44 in the front, but again, this is gonna need an upgrade. We're talking massive power. So we're going bigger, we're going better, but I'm not gonna tell you exactly what it is yet because first things first, we gotta get the old axles out of the Jeep. And to help Kevin and our good friend, Tony Carvello, from Dynatrack itself are actually gonna be doing most of the work today because our beautiful, wonderful technician, Danny, has other stuff to do. DCD Customs is still a business. They still have customer cars they've gotta work on. So for those of you who are new to the channel and didn't know that Kevin can actually turn a wrench. <laughs> you can? Surprise, surprise, he actually can. So first things first, old axles gotta come out. So we definitely don't need those 33 inch tires anymore because we're going bigger and badder, of course. So just a quick side note while we're working on all this, if you're ever gonna do a brake upgrade to like power stop brakes or anything like that, to remove the, once you have the caliper off with the two bolts, to remove the rotor, there's actually one little screw right here that's like a T25 or a T30 Torx. Just lefty loosey, that's what holds the rotor on. As soon as that comes off, this rotor will come off. A lot of vehicles actually don't have that. So as soon as you remove the wheel, the rotor's kind of loose. And then once you remove the caliper, the whole rotor is completely loose. And a lot of vehicles don't actually have that, which is cool with this. I found a new toy. All right, so most of y'all probably remember that Kevin and I are actually running a Dynatrack Pro Rock 44 already in the front of our JL. We installed that back in January before King of the Hammers. However, with 500 horsepower <laughs> and 500 foot pounds of torque, and plus, Kevin's foot and, yeah, foot. and Kevin's foot, this isn't really gonna cut it for heavy wheeling well, like we do. And going to 40s. And going to 40s. So, Dynatrack doesn't recommend 40s for a Pro Rock 44? We don't recommend 40s with uh, uh, a V8. A V8. <laughs> and Kevin's foot. <laughs> <laughs> and our style of wheeling. So we are having to upgrade, obviously, the front axle. Now, for 99% of y'all, the Pro Rock 44 is probably fantastic. And it's even gonna be more fantastic because we're not selling this. We are not giving away Yeah, I know. Uh, okay. our so axle. I know we always do giveaways for our old stuff, <laughs> but what Dynatrack's gonna do, because they know that we've already beaten the crap out of this thing, Dynatrack's gonna take this back and they're gonna tear it apart and look over all of it, especially since we just broke our rear ring gear um, recently in the stock axle housing. They wanna pull us apart and inspect everything knowing that we've just put it through hell these past few months. That is correct, that's Absolutely. what we do. You're one of the early uh, adopters to this uh, Pro Rock 44 for a JL. And we, we were one of the sure. first ones to get this specific type of yeah, axle. That is correct. Now they'll get to actually see what their first kind of iteration. How it, how held, it up. held up. Yeah, yeah. We, we did our own uh, testing and bench test and uh, physical tests, but it's always great to have real life uh, data. All across the nation, rock bouncing on the East Coast, rock crawling on the West Coast, 
Kevin doing on. stupid stuff all across I the nation. I jumped the front end a couple times. Jumping the vehicle. I, I did. I did. Did you jump <laughs> off the front end off Oh, the that was awesome. So that's why that I'm curious great. to see what this looks like. And the here. miles. You guys put a lot oh, of yeah. miles. Yeah. A ton of miles. Yeah. So they're going to take this back, tear it apart, see if they can find out how it did, if they yeah. can improve it in any way, shape, or form, or see if it's fan-freaking-tastic as is, which honestly, if it survived what we put it through, yeah. I'm fine. pretty sure it's going to be fine. But All right, let's go get the new one. 500 horsepower, Kevin's foot, we need a new one. <laughs> Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is the size of this thing. <laughs> do, you, do you see this? Guys, let me officially introduce to you a Dynatrack 60 and a Dynatrack 80. Holy crap. It's big. That's what she said. <laughs> oh. Holy crap. Holy crap. This will handle every throttle input you put in, Kevin. So Look at the size of those freaking knuckles. Yes, 1550. Jesus. So what you're saying is Kevin can do all the four-wheel burnouts he could ever want to do. He can go crazy. At least without concern of the axis. Wait, what's this? Breaking. Is this a skid? This is a skid, yes. A skid for the what? steering. Oh, sick. Yeah, we try to think of everything here. Yeah. Dude. So we got a skid, so now I don't even have to worry about hitting it on a rock. No, no, you should be able to pounce this off rocks like crazy. So it's pretty obvious why we decided to go with Dynatrack, aside from the fact that they've been building axles for over 30 years. If you've noticed, in the box, it comes with literally everything you need to just bolt this bad boy up. You have the tie rod, you have the steer smarts, the aftermarket uh, drag right. link. Yeah, all the, the brackets are in place. Everything all simplified, so then it's just a bolt on. You could bolt it on in your driveway and you're with minimal tools. They make it as easy as possible for you to do this install. And on top of that, it makes everything even better is, of course, that Dynatrax, their parts, materials, labor, everything is made here in the good old U.S. of A. Even their t-shirts. Even their t-shirts. <laughs> so now the real question is why we made the decision that we did as far as going with the Dynatrax 60 front and, of course, the 80 in the rear. We'll get to the 80 later, but let's start with the 60. Let's go with the big hitters, right? Uh, the obvious things, right? These big, massive uh, knuckles, right? Especially in engineered and designed, minimal to zero scrub. So you're talking about basically your steering acumen in the front. That's right. So then the, the pattern of the tires, right? When you put wider tires, bigger tires, yeah. it puts a lot more strain in the steering system, uh -huh. right? So we make sure that the, the knuckles are designed to, to minimize that to very, very little. So then so your steering is happy, the, the dynamics of the vehicle is happy, and it can handle that abuse with that big tire. And right? then of course, and just these, strength in general, these huge, obviously. These huge U joints, right? <laughs> 1550, right? Yeah, 1550, they're 1550 big. 1550 there, we have 3.75 tubing here. Yes. You guys, like, we don't need a skid plate. Um, yeah. I, know, I know for us it, before, like having a rear diff skid was like one of the greatest modifications we had made to our vehicle because we could just smash it through rocks. If we break this, we have, we have way bigger problems. Bigger problems. Yeah. A lot of bigger problems. <laughs> I also, the, the massive brakes on this, right? We have 500 yes. horsepower now. People yeah. are, how are you going to stop we that? We need upgraded brakes. Well, bigger brakes, bigger brackets, just beef in every way possible. What kind of ground clearance? Because people are always worried about that. What kind of ground clearance am I losing well, over a Pro Rock 44? Um, well, th this would all depend on different uh, different tire sizes and, and measurements. But yeah. what we could say is that we have the patented uh, highest ground clearance out of all any any 60 in the, in the business at least for so now. So you have the most so, ground clearance. Oh, in the absolutely! Moment. It is tucked as tight as possible, but being efficient as possible. It is designed not just to last and to withstand the type of crap that this guy can dish out on a Jeep. I am nice. I am nice. So the Pro Rock 44 was fantastic and it's great if you're doing easy rock crawling and obviously you're running a stock 36 or anything like that. But the moment you start adding 
more power. You're gonna need something and 40, stronger. And 40s, and 40s and 42s. Everything. You need something that's gonna be more reliable, especially for Kevin and I when we're traveling across the nation, thousands of miles a month, hitting the hardest trails we possibly can, towing. So yeah, yeah. and towing. Pretty, Pretty obvious. <laughs> so at this point, we're gonna bolt it up. Oh, which, by the way, so this is straight bolt up. Plug, plug, and and plug is plug and play yeah. as an axle swap could possibly be. Uh, we sell it all the different combinations. Right? Exactly. So you can choose your own. You like. Yeah, your own gearing. You can choose your axle shaft. You can choose right. a no, ton of stuff. Brackets, no brackets. Right. So exactly. we we actually went with the 68 and a half wide axle. Then they do also have the 72 and a half wide axle. That's correct. Yeah. For JL, we do. We weren't going for the crazy wide stance. The axles way out there. The wheels and tires way out there. We're trying to keep it like kind of civil looking. So it's. A, a sleeper, Civil looking. <laughs> Sleep, sleeper, you Civil know, but, like you said. <laughs> but at this point, it's bolt up time. So just a side note, uh, with the extra weight of the engine, motor, motor, engine motor, <laughs> We did go with a little bit taller spring. Now these are actually JK springs, so they're gonna have a higher spring rate because the JK was a heavier vehicle. So the spring rates were higher. So these are still metal cloak dual rate springs. But what we're doing is you can see here, there's a slight difference in height and hopefully that's gonna make up the difference. And also the uh, added spring rate is also gonna help out. I mean, we're basically hoping that'll help to kind of counter yeah. the added weight of our new Hemi. Yep. Basically. So we're gonna throw these new guys in here. Wow, that, wow, was, that really was loud. loud. That was super loud. So you want to line up your little nipples up here. Wait, these nipples? Your nipples. <laughs> Everybody's, Everybody's nipples. Everybody's nipples need to be lined up. But little. basically he's talking about this little guy. So what's also cool about axles, when you get this big, you're actually able to add a manual locking hub. Now what's important about that is, you can actually, right here, you lock and unlock your hub. So if you break something, if you break a U joint or you break an axle or something happens, you can manually unlock your hub and then make this free spinning. That way, you can actually still drive and get off the trail. A 44 housing or 30 or 35 housing, there isn't physically enough room to have a locking hub. Now, of course, if you have a JL, Rubicon or any of them, they have the uh, front axle disconnect, which is a fork. But all that's doing is that's disconnecting the axle on the long side, and you're only disconnecting one side. This is the most beefy, most bad system there is. There's nothing stronger than this right here. This it, literally is called a Dynalock, and it is 100%. It is actually the strongest manually locking hub system on the market. So, at the moment right this second so here let me show you so right now we're locked come over here to the u-joint so we're driving along we're locked we're spinning and then snap somehow we break something here i can come over here and unlock it and now look see it, it disconnects the wheel hub bearings unit from the rest of the system so then i'll lock it back in again and there you go and now you're locked back in now another reason that we decided to go with the dynatrack xd60 axle is because in addition to having the highest clearancing axle housing on the market they also have the 1550 joints plus they have patented heavy duty and completely totally rebuildable ball joints which is pretty rad plus these 1550 joints were completely engineered to give you perfect steering ackerman which more or less equates to having zero tire scrub when turning which is also super rad Front axle done, onto the rear. I'm gonna pull the tires, drop the axle. The rear is actually super easy.
Everything's all good. Well, we have all the weight in the front, and we just got rid of all the weight in the back. So we have so heavy it, weight and Dynatrack 60 weight in the front, and no weight in the back. So we were trying to be extra careful so it didn't boop on the lift. Yeah. <laughs> but rear axle's out, officially out, which means the new one can go in. Now with that out of the way, let me introduce you to my not so little friend, the Dynatrack XD80, which is equipped with Dynatrack's patented high ground clearance housing, which is currently the most ground clearance on the market, a massive 11 and a quarter inch ring gear, a heavy duty nodular center section, giant 40 spline shafts, four and an eighth inch diameter carrier bearings, and not to mention that all of this is put together with four inch diameter tubing. This is the only axle on the market with four inch tubing. They are industry leading when it comes to this. And then you top all of that off with of course, the amazing fact that this again is all parts, labor, everything built here in the great United States of America. It's all American made. And that is pretty freaking awesome and extremely rare. While you're wearing a shirt that says Tokyo. Why am I wearing a shirt? <laughs> I like Japan. I do like Japan. We've been there multiple times. <laughs> However, made in the USA. Rock on, America. All right, but in all seriousness though, I know a lot of you are probably genuinely wondering why we decided to go with the Dynatrack 80 versus the Dynatrack 60 for the front and the rear. So I, I thought I wanted 60s front and rear. A little extra ground clearance with the 60, but after researching, it is a little heavier to go with the 80, but you're only losing, I think it's like seven 70. millimeters. Seven millimeters or yeah. something? It's like the, the thickness of a pencil is the difference between ground clearance on an 80 and a 60. So you're really and not the, giving up that much ground clearance. And then the 80 is only about 70-ish, I believe, pounds heavier than the 60. The 60 is typically what people tend to go with when they're wanting to do more high speed because they want lighter weight. Whereas the 80 is your rock crawling, indestructible, right. will never leave you broken on a trail So option. That's, that's what we found is that this right here is what people with like rock bouncers use. We figured if we're already doing it, let's just do it. I mean, who cares if we lose a little bit of fuel economy? Who cares if it's a little bit heavier? Who cares in the <laughs> end? Who cares about all that in the end? I mean, we, we have a 500 horsepower Hemi now. We're going to have the biggest drive shafts and U joints. And it's just like, let's just build it and be done. Like, let's you just You have to think about it in our perspective at this point. We are doing something that no one else is doing period no one else is taking a jl and driving it across the country on a daily basis towing no less yeah. hitting the hardest trails we can find and we can accomplish and then hooking that the trailer, that trailer back, back up and towing with that vehicle yeah. back across the country like <laughs> we've been in la for almost four weeks now i can't do this again i don't want to do this yeah again. we we're not sit still people we get <laughs> We get really stressed when we're in one so, place for too long. So this right here is gonna ensure that we're not gonna have any, any issues. Axles, axle issues, no ring and pinion issues, no drive shaft U joint issues. I mean, sure, you can break anything, but if I break this, we're probably our in the Jeep hospital. Is, yeah, our Jeep is split in two, and yeah. we have way bigger problems to be concerned about than <laughs> this. For our personal use and our personal goals and objectives for our Jeep would be and, the best option for us. And I'm actually possibly looking at towing a trailer, a live-in quarters type of toy hauler with the big power and the big axles. I don't know if I really want to go through with that, but most people by this point, they have a toy hauler, a crawler hauler, but they or at have, least a truck with but a they trailer. have like a th right, they, they have like a 3500 Ram diesel or whatever with a trailer that they're towing their four, you know, their four by four rig with, whether it's a Toyota or a Jeep or whatever the yeah. heck you have. We are on the other not. hand, not, <laughs> we're driving, we're living out of it. For those of you who are new to the channel, Kevin and I live out of this Jeep. We do not have a house. We do not have a home. We haven't been home to Colorado in four months where we rent a room out of a house and which we'll probably even get rid of once the lease is up because again, we haven't been there in four months. So that's why 60 and 80, the rear takes usually the most abuse. So 
this is where we're at. And this is why we ultimately decided to go with the Dynatrack XD80 for the rear end of our Jeep. For anyone who was curious. All right, so let's go put this in, <laughs> put the 40s on it, and put it on the ground. Cause put it on the ground. It's been like three or four weeks now. <laughs> All let's, right, let's go do this. Let's do it. I would just like to point out that Jelly is doing a phenomenal job of supervising the work right now today. Yeah, he's doing a good job. Is Kevin doing good? Good girl. Okay, front and rear axles are on, they're bolted in. We have to wait to set everything down to tighten everything up. Yep. But we have this cool bracket and some cables here. Cool cables. What is this contraption? This, <laughs> this is the parking brake system. All right, yes. those were completely new axles and it's not the same design. That's right, yeah, the way the, the JL operates and now the way the 80 operates are two different styles. So you guys made an adapter kit. That's exactly it. So this gets mounted onto the chassis. Okay. And then these cross each, each other and actually join so, back to the to the brakes. So hopefully I don't have any aftermarket stuff in the place that this needs to bolt. Yes. 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 <laughs> because that seems to happen a lot. Although I think we've ripped everything out from underneath the Jeep so yeah, far. I think we're good right now. So I think we're good. But anyway. We're getting so much closer. I know. It's so close. Very so close. close. Okay, let's Super go bolt this up. Now, for those of you who have not been following the build closely thus far, these are KMC XD 228s. These are 17 by eight and a half with a 4.75 backspacing. And these are Milestar Patagonia 40 inch MTs. This is gonna be freaking awesome. All right, moment of truth. That's it? Oh my gosh. Those fit way better than the 33 inch tires we had on there yesterday. <laughs> Holy sh! And for those of you who have been following along, the tires and the wheels now officially match the growl and the grumble of the Hemi. Like this. <laughs> I can't even. Wow. I mean, the springs have to settle some, right? Yeah, the springs have to settle. It'll, it'll like drop the, a little bit more, like but just, uh, would, you, would you just look at it? Would you just look at it? Kevin, how am I supposed to get in this now? Uh, How are you supposed to get in this I don't think it's that much higher. Oh, sh**. Yeah! The seat. The, the Kevin, seat, I can't even see your the, the chin. The seat is up to my sternum. <laughs> like, the seat is like a... This is my seat. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I'll get up in here somehow. <laughs> Holy crap. I cannot believe how great this looks. This is exactly 
Was where it everything you imagined and then some? Literally perfect. It sits so freaking awesome. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that perfect. Just so, like, just, just very subtly there. Oh. And that officially concludes day five, six? I don't know what day it is, but <laughs> this day, today, of the stepchild's build, the stepchild's transformation, holy freaking awesome sauce, you guys. Dynatrack XD60's front, Dynatrack XD80's rear, plus the new KMC's and the 40 inch tires. Oh <laughs> my. It brought it all together. Gosh. So I'm really happy we went with the 68 and a half wide. I wasn't sure 68 and a half or 72 and a half. Everybody's like, go big, go big, go big, go 72s. So happy we went with the 68, the 68 and a half inch wide axle. It with just looks, is look at this. literally perfect. Oh, it, yeah. It just, it looks so freaking amazing, you guys. We're so excited, <laughs> but we are not done yet. Believe it or not, the transformation still has not a ways to go, but still there's, There's a, a whole few things. day of little things that we have to do. Also, we still need drive shafts because at this point, <laughs> the rear is a 1410. If you look up a 1410 sh like shaft U joints, it's uh, it's huge. It's pretty crazy. That's what she said. <laughs> so we definitely Anyways, we do need order, drive shafts. We have to measure and order that tomorrow. We need 1350 fronts. There's also a couple other goodies we still have yet to tell you guys about. So yeah. as always, stay tuned. Please don't forget, you can always find all of your Light Bright Nation merch at lightbrightstudios.com, all of your Light Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com. Thank you guys, we love you so much, and we will see you next time. Peace! Mwah. Look at this. I don't think this is anything I ever want to drop on my toes. No. No. Yeah. That Definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> One more, you ready? Giant 40 spline shafts. Okay, spline emphasis shaft. on the giant? The All right. giant All right. 40 spline shafts.